green sweater here and it's a really nice pattern because it has got a closure which means that if your kid has a problem with something going over their head then it's no issue either because you've got the closure which you can open up and I think it's a great technique to put uh, into your little box of things that you know how to do it's very very simple to do it's actually not complicated we've just working with two facings here really and they just go on top of each other and that's it the problem doing this was to do the pattern for you <laughs> now that wasn't easy but now you've got the pattern it's awfully easy and all my patterns as you, some of you might already know come in single files so for all the children's patterns you've got one file per pattern and of course you get all the sizes that are included with a pattern that means that you can cut it out in you know any type of space you don't really need much space to do it at all and also you don't waste so much paper because obviously if you have a small size um, more will fit on an A sheet or a letter size sheet and I don't need so many pieces of paper so maybe you have six or seven pieces of paper whereas the H3 will have 12 pieces of paper so it's saving you um, you know sanity and also paper and what goes with this gorgeous little sweater are these jogger bottoms they have got some really ingenious pockets here which look really difficult to do but they're not they're not proper weld pockets they're in fact just a seam and well there's a trick to it but there's a video here on YouTube for that as well and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link in the top right hand corner of this video and it's also in the info box so you can find everything you need down there and you can get uh, the link to this video as well and see if that's something for you. I think they make a really really super pair together and let's begin and have a look at what fabrics are suitable for this. Here I've used some sweatshirt fabric which is really cool. Um, it only is two-way stretch and not even that much. You don't need uh, a lot of stretch in it because it is really big But you should not use woven fabric with no stretch that will not work It is a raglan sweatshirt and as you can see blended in here on the side We've made loads of different ones and we absolutely love this little sweatshirt So you can go wild you can use heavier sweat fabrics heavier knit fabrics for this the one thing you shouldn't use for it is woven fabrics and very lightweight fabrics. That doesn't work. And as the closure, I've used cam snaps, which are always very good. You could also use metal snaps. Um, that is a good idea if you already know the cam snaps and you know how to sew and you want to challenge yourself a little bit. But apart from that, um, I would stick with the cam snaps. So what you have got here, which is a little bit different because we've got a closure in here, we've got a right sleeve and we've got a left sleeve. And so you need to cut them out so that they're facing up so indeed you get a right and a left sleeve. And in the academy I also got a chapter which shows you how to adapt the pattern very quickly to make the bob standard one without the closure. You don't necessarily need it, the head will go through but I think it's a really nice design. Uh, feature and it looks very nice and I think anyone should learn how to do this and then we've got two different ways of finishing the hem trim down here now here you can see it's just a plain hem trim but I've also done the high low one which you can see in the little picture blended in here on, to my side and that works really well as well it's just overlocked and sewn too but in this video I'm going to show you what to do if this is really thick fabric and you want it to be nice and flat when you use lighter weight fabric it's flat anyway you wouldn't really need it right here I didn't need it but just in case you're using heavier knit then you definitely do and I'm going to show you exactly how that works so let's get started I've used some interfacing to reinforce where I'm going to put my placket. I've used a yellow top stitching thread and then a light blue standard cotton thread for all my seams. Here you can see the interfacing that I'm going to put onto the placket and I'm just quickly going to cut that. Right let's get started. 
the first thing we're going to do is to iron on those interfacing bits. You don't need any steam for that. My iron is uh, one of these miraculous American irons. It never turns off the steam. It's really cheap. There we go. Just do the other side. And then all I need to do is overlock that little edge at the top or surge. If you're in America, it's surging. Now I'm going to sew the sleeves to the front and then on the other side we are only closing it up to where the placket is. We're going one centimeter higher than where the placket starts and then I'm going to place the back on as well like this and all I have to do now is to flip the back over, put it on and I can pin the other seams for the sleeve. Now I'm going to sew those in and again with most of my stuff we have a one centimeter seam allowance. I'm just going to go backwards and forwards securing my stitches and then my centimeter seam allowance all the way down to the end. And with all my seams now closed I need to overlock them. Now I fold over my placket so that I can see clearly the overlocking and then we're just overlocking this edge and pull it around a bit uh, make sure that you don't cut into it of course that is a real risk you might want to turn off your knife if you're not sure you can do that and then we can proceed to iron all our sleeves into the front and here where i've got my opening i can now fold it over where it needs to be so that overlaps with leaving a little bit standing of the front piece. Now I'm going to sew this down, lengthen your stitch length, make sure it's 3.5 or even 4 and then on your presser foot you need to find a fixed point to go down. You want to make sure that you do that on all three seams and leave out the opening. Now we're going to do the neck band and we're going to close the short sides first, one centimeter seam allowance down here. So cut off your seam allowances so it's nice and small because we are going to put a cam snap in there. And if it's really thick, partly where the cam snap is gripping it, it will come off or will not go in. So cut it really short and then iron the whole thing lengthways in half so it's nicely done. The first thing to do is to half your sweatshirt and you will see that it's actually exactly on the seam there. Here I'm just going to put my back onto the center back, which is obviously not the center back, but it's the center, you know, it's halved. And here you can see it goes just where the placket starts. And then I just stretch this and I work my fingers to the middle and I'm going to put the pins all the way around. And once we've sewn it in, we're going to sew across here to then stitch in the placket as well. If you did that in one go and you just folded it over, it will just give a really ugly nose. It won't work as well. Trust me, it will always move. Make sure that it's even Stephen and then sew it in. And I'm using a foot width seam allowance here. There you go, beautiful to the end. And I make sure that nothing slips out here at the front. It always wants to do that. So I make sure it ends exactly where the placket starts. And now the next step is to fold over the placket really tightly. And now I can then pin this and I'm turning it over to the other side. And I'm doing that because I can already see what I've stitched. It's not so easy to hit that sweet spot if you don't turn it over. So make sure that you do it from the underside, so to speak, so that you just go in that same stitching line and it gives you an absolutely beautiful result like this. So now I can go back to the overlocker and I'm lining it up with a point on my lock. You can see here it's the Brother Lock 1034D. It's a very cheap machine, but it's done me for years. I've bought this machine over and over for school and I've told everyone about this machine because it's 
cheap and cheerful but it works so now i'm going to just press this over my ironing board make sure a lot of steam goes into the fabric and you hold in anything that you might have stretched the next step is to do the top stitching on the opening and because the front placket is a little bit wider than the back one you should have no issue doing this I'm starting on the underarm seam and again stitch length 3.5 to 4 if not 4.5 depending on your sewing machine and you come up and you use the same fixed point of course that you had before and I'm going up to the point where I want to sew into my front piece. So once I've reached that I can put the needle down, I turn and then I'm going to stitch across and because we've got that little bit more um, it should be fine to stitch upwards without moving it out of the way you know like I'm doing here but you could also just mark this with a textile pen if you're not sure you know that you can go up straight that you might bear off then you could mark that with a textile pen first and then follow that line there's no reason to move it all the way out of the way like I'm doing here anyway secure your stitches and because I wanted to see what it looks like with two stitching lines I'm just doing that I'm going back down I think it's not really necessary to be honest <laughs> You could also have two stitching lines as well where you top stitch it onto the front the sleeve so that's up to you however you want to do this now we're going to put the cam snaps on so here it's going in so i press down really hard so i have an indent where it needs to go and then i get the owl and I'm just pushing through all the layers that's a technique you always use with the cam snaps it's really easy and then you take one flat cam snap and one with the slightly raised edges, the thicker edges and then you've got another one with sharp edges and that's going to be your top cam snap. I'm doing the one with a thicker edge here. The first thing is to put through your cam snap from the underside and the prong needs to stand out to the other side and then I'm going to put the second part on which is the one with a thicker rim and I'm using my tool then to press that together and the little prong that stands up is going to be squished down and therefore hold it in place it works really really well I have to tell you the cam snaps for a beginner are wonderful okay next I'm going to do the top cam snap and I'm pushing my prong through from the top side and then put the sharp rim on and I'm just doing these up now and that's it we've done it with our two tools and our camp snaps are in excellent now we can move on to the next bit we are going to close the side seams that is so simple we're doing it in one go and it gives us another little look here at our placket isn't that fantastic it came out so well and we're going from the lower end all the way up to the top on the one side and exactly the other way on the other side so one centimeter seam allowance back to that old thing and you don't need to pull anything here or use a special stitch it automatically will have a little bit of stretch in it it's just what what will happen anyway make sure that nothing falls over i've actually removed the pin there because it's a little bit thick and i've only got one needle <laughs> left and if it breaks it breaks i have no other one so i thought nah but i take it out and then you stitch all the way down to the other side and then you can move over to your overlocker and overlock it or surge it it's come out really well now we're going to iron the seams and the rule for that is always iron the seams towards the center back and you do that on both sides of course cut off all your overlocking threads always work really neatly now we're going to do the cuffs and the hem trim so the hem trim has the front and the back twice each so what we're going to do is we're going to find a front piece and a back piece and we're going to sew them together on the side seam with the right sides facing each other 
front is shorter than the back. I think that's really cool. I'm also going to do the wrist cuffs now while I'm at it. No point going to the machine again later. And I can move over and sew those all together. We're going to iron all the seam allowances apart. And then we're going to go on with the hem trim and we're going to put the cuffs to the side for a minute and we're coming back to them after we finish the hem trim. And with the hem trim, I'm doing a different technique. I also show you the Bob Standard technique, but that is in a different video, which you can also watch at the Academy. So we take the hem trims, put them inside each other, right sides facing, and then we're going to close the lower edge of it, which is one that dips down in the back and comes up in the front. So if you're sewing together the straight edge, that is wrong. <laughs> so you want to do the edge that has the curve on. Going all the way around, I'm using a Bob Standard stitch again. So now I am going to cut back my seam allowances just to make sure it's nice and flat. And then we're going to iron the seam apart because I'm not understitching it. Could you understitch it? Of course you could. Then I'm going to turn it and roll the edge out and also press that all the way around so it looks really nice and sharp. I love it. So now I'm going to put my trim over and I'm going to now attach just one side. That's why it's going to be flat, because we're going to iron the seam apart. So the top part of it is going to be overlocked. The lower part here is just going to be pinned to and sewn on. There we go. All pinned over to the sewing machine. And let's sew this in and then overlock the top edge right along there. Again, seam allowance is one centimeter. If you do foot width, it's going to be like a few millimeters longer. It doesn't matter. It's product placement here. Nobody pays me for it. I think my brother should give me lots of money. <laughs> so now I'm just going to fold over this part and it's going to literally sit on the other seam allowance. And I'm pinning everything in. And again, I'm using pins which are vertical to the seam so I can leave them in. I have to say, because all this fabric was really thick, which is why I wanted to show this light method, I um, actually took them out because what happens sometimes when you leave your pins in and you sew over them and you're using top stitching thread, you'll have a loop underneath it. I'm going over now again on the other side as well, as you can see me do here, and that gives it a really commercial look so people won't immediately be able to tell that you've sewn that yourself so done now i want to press this so that any wibbly wobblies are gone lots of steam and we have arrived at our last part which is going to be the cuffs we just need to place the ends on top of each other so that we have our cuff and then give it a quick press across the fold and now we're going to put them in and the trick to putting them in is to first of all turn your top inside out and then have the cuff on the inside never have it on the outside it's actually way easier to stretch it to if the cuff sits on the inside and now I'm putting the seam onto the underarm seam and I just stretch it to the other side and now I can go over to my sewing machine and I stitch it in. Now that's sewn in, I'm back off to my overlocker and I'm going to surge it, overlock it all the way around, squeeze it. Please get into the habit of that because it's so easy to have one of them vertical pins still in there and then you ruin your knife. And that is it. We have finished our sweatshirt. The cuffs are on. All we need to do is give them a gentle press and we are done. Thank you everyone for watching to the end and I hope to see you soon again with another project from frogsandfrolics.com. Bye for now.